The Flak 88 is often portrayed as a Wunderwaffe that could one-shot kill most or even any tank in World War II. The question is, does this claim of the one-shot killer hold up to data we have available or not? Well, let's dive into the foxhole to find out. At first, we need to establish a baseline. Freeman in his master thesis A Study of Ammunition Consumption notes, In World War II, the kill ratio was a ratio of 14 to 1. It took 14 rounds of ammunition to kill an armored vehicle. I must add here, I could not track down his original source for the claim. And I'm highly skeptical about the value, something which should be obvious at the end of the video. Yet back to the matter at hand, the Flak 88. We know it was very accurate, had a high muscle velocity with a low firing arc, high penetration values and also a comparatively strong explosive filler for its armor piercing shell. As such it was not a regular anti-tank weapon, especially considering that it was able to penetrate all tanks at the beginning of the war and even in 1945 it could still engage most tanks. Which is in stark contrast to the original main anti-tank weapon of the Germans, the 37mm anti-tank gun which was obsolete by 1941 or even 1940 standards, depending on who you ask. Now let's look at some data from 1941 engagements in the Soviet Union and North Africa, according to information that was recovered by Jens in various combat reports. Let's start with data from the Eastern Front. A total of 117 8.8cm Panzergranaten rounds were expended to knock out 4 KV-1 and 8 T-31 tanks at an average of 10 rounds per tank. Yet both the T-34 and KV-1 were well known for their strong armor protection, so one could argue that those were maybe due to ricochets. But Jens also has data on North Africa, where many of the engaged tanks were British cruiser Mark IV, which are not particularly resilient, yet according to the German reports Jens notes, for those engagements where the range was short enough to observe the results, 54 tanks had been claimed as knocked out for an expenditure of 613 Panzergranate, an average of 11 Panzergranate per tank. This is quite close to the expenditure of ammunition per claimed kill reported by the 2. Batterie Flak Regiment 701 in Soviet Russia. As such, we have for both theaters a 10 to 11 shots per kill claim. Note that in some reports the use of high explosive rounds is also listed, yet it seems these were only used against supporting forces. Now for some of you that information might be quite surprising, while for others it might not be particularly new. The issue is we actually need to put this data into context. The problem is that the data situation for proper comparison is not the best, so a little bit of warning here. The amount of data is very limited and the circumstances for each engagement, time period, weapons used, etc. vary widely. So be aware to take the information here as a broad guideline, not as proof. Nevertheless, it is the best we have currently available. So let's look at the data from several sources, namely German and American ones. Let's start with data from Sturmgeschütz Brigades from December 1943 to May 1944. For this, the logo notes from 1st December 1943 to 31st May 1944, 23 Stuck Brigades on the Russian front fired a total of 51,595 armor piercing rounds against Soviet tanks and other armored targets. This resulted in claims for 1,899 armored fighting vehicles destroyed as well as 132 disabled. This indicates that it took more than 25 rounds of ammunition for every Soviet tank destroyed or disabled. Now I looked up Saloga's source here to find more information, thereby encountered several issues. First, the ammunition data is imprecise. To quote the book that Saloga cites as his source, the evaluation undertaken with 23 Stuck Brigades, which were operational on the Russian front between the 1st of September 1943 and the 31st May 1944, provided the following overview. Of 315,280 rounds, 51,595 were fired against tanks and 263,685 against other targets. Combating tanks evidently required a higher expenditure of ammunition. Of 51,600 rounds fired against tanks, 8.3% were high explosive rounds, 21.2% hollow charges and 70.5% armor piercing rounds. As you can see it were not 51,595 armor piercing rounds, but rounds in total used against armor targets. Now this is not a major error and could also be the work of some misguided editor. Yet there's a more glaring issue. 
Namely, the number of destroyed and disabled tank is not found on this page at all, not even close. It is actually 56 pages later, but the main issue is that the periods don't match. The AMO date is from the 1st December 1943 to the 31st May 1944, whereas the data for the tanks destroyed and disabled is for January 1944 to May 1944, which is close enough but still incorrect. Considering the circumstances and my own experience, such an oversight can easily happen, although adding the second page number would have saved Dr. Roman Töppel and me probably a few hours of digging around. As such, the value of 25 rounds of ammunition per kill claim should be a bit lower. Due to the lack of data, we have to use averages, which are likely off, yet we don't have any other choice here. Using the average expenditure of 8600 rounds per month, we have now 5 months with 8600 shots, so a total of 43,000 rounds against 1,899 destroyed and 132 disabled armored vehicles, which means 21 rounds per kill slash disabled claim, which is far above the number of 14 rounds noted in the master thesis, which also accounts for kills not claims. Luckily, Müller and Zimmermann have some data of a specific Sturmgeschützabteilung that provides both ammo expenditure and kill claims. In the combat period 5th July to 31st August 1943, Stugabteilung 177 fired a total of 7,792 5.cm rounds, 354 per assault gun, and 2,710 rounds of 10.5cm caliber. The battalion destroyed 243 enemy tanks and immobilized another 18. So if we do the math, this means we have about 40 rounds per kill slash disabled claim, which is quite different from the average data provided across 23 Sturmgeschützbrigades. So much for now of the Eastern Front, let's head to the Western or better Mediterranean Front. Now we have some data from January to February 1944, for the 301st and the 345th Tank Destroyer Battalions at Anzio. I used the article by Nicholas Aker de Chifton Moran and added together the kill claims and ammo expenditure. Note that this data set is very similar to the data provided by Jens on the FLAG 88. It is for specific engagement and associated kill claims. This is in stark contrast to the data on the Stux, which was over a time period and as such very likely includes ammo spent on targets that were not claimed as kill. As such, I added up all ammunition expenditures noted in Chifton's article including extreme examples like this. 3rd Battalion was in the fight as well, at 10 am engaging a group of 6 tanks, killing a Panzer IV and a Panzer III definite, and one possible for the loss of one M10 burned. The report indicated the use of 10 rounds armor piercing capped and 50 rounds high explosive in order to achieve this at 1100 yards. The explanation provided by one of the gun commanders, Sergeant Ryder, was that in order to get hits on the tanks, they first had to demolish the buildings that were between the tank destroyers and the targets. But let's look at the data. Together we have a total of 29.5 Panzers and Sturmgeschütze claimed as killed or disabled. Note that 0.5 accounts for an armored car that was part of several kill claims with armor expenditure given. So how much armor was spent? Well, a total of 356 rounds were expended, of which 185 rounds were high explosive, 100 armor piercing capped, only 19 rounds were regular armor piercing shells, and 52 shells where the exact type was not given. This means we have 12.1 rounds expended per kill claim, which is rather similar to the flag ratio. We get quite different to the Stug ratios, yet this is likely due to the fact that here we look at specific engagements where the Stug data is for a broad timeline. Finally, let's look at some data from Tiger units namely the Schwere Panzerabteilung 502, for June and July 1944, while it was engaged on the Eastern Front. Here's a logo notes. For example, the Tiger tanks of the Panzerabteilung 502 during 24th to 30th June 1944 claimed the destruction of 27 Soviet tanks and armored fighting vehicles, expanding 1079 88mm armor piercing rounds. This equals 40 rounds for each Soviet vehicle destroyed. In the next engagements during 4th to 27th July, 85 Soviet tanks and armored vehicles were destroyed for an expenditure of 555 rounds or about 6.5 rounds per target destroyed. The first set of engagement took place at the very long ranges 
of the two kilometers. The second set were meeting engagements at closer ranges. The main issue here is there's no source for this information in Zalogo's book. I assumed it was Schneider's Tigers in Combat, but he provides less precise information. Thankfully, Dr. Roman Töppel has a copy of the particular reports of the Schwere Panzerabteilung 502 and looked up the data for me. As such, we could confirm that Zalogo's data here is spot on. It should be noted that only armor piercing ammo was counted, similar to Jens. Yet we know that both the US tank destroyers and German Sturmgeschütz unit used high explosive ammunition against armor targets as well. Yet the most interesting aspect is that we have two very different values for the same unit at almost the same time, namely 40 shots per kill claim versus 6.5 rounds per kill claim. This clearly indicates that the most determining factor is likely the combat circumstances, as pointed out by Saloga. Now before we look at the conclusion, let's step back a bit and look at the bigger picture. Namely, how much ammo was usually expended on the battlefield, because the number is extremely high compared to what most of us would expect from popular media like movies and computer games, which usually don't account for weather, stress, suppression, war equipment and many other aspects. Now again, this is not a perfect example, but it should give you a basic idea. So let's take a look at the amount of one ammo type expanded by the Germans during the invasion of Poland in 1939. According to Hahn, the Panzers used a total of 249,903 shots of 37mm gun ammunition, both armor piercing and high explosive. And almost 1.8 million shots were expanded by anti-tank guns. So in total more than 2 million shots of 37mm ammo were expanded by Panzers and anti-tank guns. Note that some of this ammo might have been lost, but we can assume the number was rather low. Now, although the primary target for such guns were likely not individual soldiers, for individual soldiers we have the highest numbers of losses. Note that the number of Polish soldiers killed and wounded is still quite different depending on the sources. But for the sake of argument, let's assume around 200,000 killed and wounded, which is likely above the actual number lost. In this case, it would have taken 10 shots of 37mm guns for each Polish casualty. Yet in this scenario, we don't account for any artillery, machine guns, infantry guns, bombs, nor a large number of other weapons as well. As you can see, although 10, 20 or even 40 shots per tank kill claim sounds rather high at first, considering the amount of ammo expended in overall, it is actually a rather low number. As always, Context is important. To conclude, first the claim that the Flak 88 was a one shot killer is ridiculous. And I would say this is the case for every other World War II weapon as well. After all, combat is extremely messy and a significant emotional event. Second, as the records of the Schwere Panzerabteilung 502 clearly indicate, the combat circumstances matter tremendously. 6.5 shots versus 40 shots per kill claim is a huge discrepancy. This is of course a good reminder that all the data presented in this video should be taken with extreme considerations, since the datasets are extremely limited and circumstantial. Third, the initial statement of 14 shots per kill from massive is in my opinion totally off, considering that this refers to actual kills and not kill claims, which are often highly inflated, something discussed on my second channel in detail. Fourth, back to the FLAC 88. Although it was not a one-shot killer, its reputation as an accurate and deadly gun is very likely not a myth, but reality. The main issue is that we generally overestimate the lethality of weapons due to simply looking at their statistics, exaggerating documentaries and or portrayals in computer games. A big thank you here to Dr. Roman Töppel for helping me with looking at the Sturmgeschütz data and also looking into his records for the Panzerabteilung 502. Thank you here to Andrew for reviewing the script and special thanks to Chifton and Joshua Wiki for helping me finding sources. As always, all errors are my own. Special thanks to all my supporters, especially Jack, Wolfgang and Michael here for sending me books that enhance this video. Sources are linked in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.